Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marlo York. Today I wanted to do a sort of follow-up video to one that I filmed probably a couple months ago regarding wasteful things that I no longer use. Um, I don't remember the actual name of it, but I'll link it up in the cards so that you guys can check it out. Hi Hogue, are you here to help? Well, you kind of can't, so, so sorry. Do you want to go on the bed? Come on, let's go on the bed. Uh, and the distractions begin. As some of you may or may not know, I'm trying much more to get into the sustainable, green living, zero waste, whatever you want to call it kind of lifestyle. So I'd love to showcase more videos like that. However, I feel like it would be a little bit of a disservice and a little bit disingenuine if I only filmed things about ways that I've become less wasteful and better for the environment and a more eco-conscious person if I didn't admit to a lot of the wasteful things that I still use despite the fact that I know there are some better alternatives. So I'm just going to get started right now. I have a little sticky note <laughs> as my notes that I've been keeping track of as things come to me. All right, we're just going to start in nice and personal, apparently. One of the wasteful things that I still use or still buy are tampons and panty liners. And to be honest, the only reason I still buy and sometimes use the disposable, more wasteful ones is because I haven't quite gotten enough reusable products in that category <laughs> to fully replace the non-reusable ones. I've been using a few different reusable menstruation type products for a little while now. One of them is the Diva Cup Luna Pads and I've just recently bought my first two pairs of Thinks underwear. So I'm trying a few different things to see what works best for me because I understand that a lot of these things are very personal and sometimes they just don't work for some people and I think that's totally fine and valid. But it is my goal to, in the near future, very near because I'm pretty close, to only use reusable menstruation type stuff. With that said, I do think it is a smart idea to have some non-reusable ones on hand because you never know if you might be out and about and, you know, you get your period kind of unexpectedly or you happen to run into a friend or family member or maybe even a stranger that just got theirs and needs something right off the bat. That has happened to me where I've given people tampons or something if they needed them. So it does help to have, I think, some around in stock, even if you don't use them yourself. But I, like I said, I'm pretty proud that I am pretty darn close to being totally reusable in that sense. The next wasteful thing that I still use is Lysol wipes, Lysol disinfecting wipes. I know I could easily use much more eco-friendly cleaning products and the same goes for like just bleach in general, but there are just certain things that I really just want the surface disinfected. So for instance, if I'm working with raw chicken, I want all of my surfaces and everything that I've used to be properly disinfected. So if I wanted to do a less wasteful alternative to using single-use Lysol wipes, I could easily use a bleach solution or other sort of disinfectant cleaner and just use linen towels or something like that or washcloths. But I worked in food service for a long time and I went through ServeSafe certification and part of that is learning about the different types of foodborne illnesses and cross-contamination and a lot of that stuff just made me very paranoid about how I clean and handle certain foods and my kitchen area so I don't know I just don't like the idea right now <laughs> of having anything that could be you know come into contact with something that is potentially some sort of awful virus or bacteria and then eventually reusing that thing again so it's just kind of for me, it's more like a health and sanitation thing than a convenience thing. The third wasteful thing that I still use is an electric toothbrush. So the more eco-friendly alternative is usually a bamboo toothbrush. I've never used one, but I've heard, you know, they're generally better for the environment. They decompose easier than regular plastic toothbrushes. But for me, this is again sort of a personal hygiene kind of sanitation issue. So I haven't had like awful teeth in the past. However, I had a full-blown phobia of the dentist. I, I hate anything that has to do with dentistry. I hate looking at teeth, any of that. It all just freaks me out, gives me really bad anxiety. And so it's always been very, very important to me to have really good, healthy teeth. And I know part of that anxiety stems from just going to the dentist as a kid and being very just traumatized by the whole thing. 
but also um, I was born with a heart murmur way back in the day. If you had a heart murmur or mitral valve prolapse was my specific type of murmur or what caused my murmur, you had to get antibiotics anytime you went to the dentist or had surgery or basically anything where the medical equipment could cause you to bleed and potentially cause an infection in your mouth which could travel through your bloodstream and get to your heart so like i said i'm very big on oral hygiene and i have had some issues in the past like i've had you know crowns fillings i've had cavities i've had gingivitis i'll just come out and say it and for a long time i could not figure out how to just make all of this stop and i think some of it is just it could just be genetics it could be the fact that i love sweets <laughs> no matter how much i take care of my teeth i feel like some of that's still part of it. One thing that a dental hygienist recommended is that I use an electric toothbrush rather than a manual one. And so I did get a toothbrush, an electric toothbrush that actually has a timer. So it will time your brushing for two minutes and it'll vibrate when it's done. And after I started using that, I have not had any severe tooth problems. I think I've had one cavity since then and I've had like some fillings, some old fillings fall out, but I haven't had severe problems with like pain, gingivitis, sensitivity, multiple cavities, anything like that. My hygienist has said that my teeth look much much better after using electric toothbrush. And so for me, having that lessened stress in terms of my dental hygiene and the dentist and not wanting to spend lots of money on expensive tooth issues. For me at this point it is just worth it to me personally to use an electric toothbrush rather than a manual toothbrush of any sort. Okay, number four. The next wasteful item I still use is disposable razors and guys I have tried so hard. I've tried multiple times, multiple ways to try to get safety razors to work. Normal razors that you would get like just at the general store, they can't be recycled because they're I think technically like a mixed material thing. So you would have to like dismantle the plastic and the metal and all of that. And I don't even necessarily know if the handles themselves are even hypothetically recyclable. So yeah, disposable razors in general are just that. They're disposable. They can't be recycled. However, if you use a safety razor, it's really just a razor that opens on the top so that you can stick razor blades into it. And it's the razor blade itself that gets recycled. They're usually stainless steel, so you can just recycle them with your regular metal recycling that you would like an aluminum can. And the handle you keep all the time. However, uh, they're just not as good, in my opinion. I used a couple of them. I tried two different ones because I bought one for myself and then my husband was like, oh, you mean one of these? And he happened to have one. So I used both of them to see if maybe there was any difference in them, but they're just very difficult to use in my opinion. They don't really shave as well. A lot of times the heads are just way too big to get into like small detail areas. Let's just call it that. And overall, I felt like I was spending way more time in the shower trying to shave and get like a halfway decent shave. And it was just frustrating me so much. I mean, I could get into a tangent alone of the whole shaving culture and why I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. But at this point, if I want a clean smooth shave, which occasionally I do because I'm still brainwashed in that way, like many of us. A disposable razor just gets it done better, in my opinion. Um, I have been using my husband's, what is the brand? Oh my gosh, it's a very famous brand at this point. Dollar Shave Club. He gave me some of his Dollar Shave Club razors that he didn't like as much and I absolutely love them. And the cool thing about them, I don't think the heads themselves are recyclable. I haven't found anything saying that they are. However, much like a safety razor, the razor heads unattach from the handle. So you keep the handle and you just get the replacement blade. So in my mind, that is slightly less waste going into the garbage every time I get done with a razor. However, I did find, I believe it's Gillette. I believe they are or were. I'm going to have to double check and I'll link information below in the description if this is still accurate. They were partnering with TerraCycle in some way so that you could gather together all of your razor product garbage, like the razor blades, razor heads, handles, disposable razors, packaging, all of that, and send it to Gillette, I believe it is, and they would send it to TerraCycle to be properly recycled and disposed of. So again, I'm going to double check on that information and see if I can link that below in the description because I think that would be a great idea. I've personally spent my own money taking products that can't be picked up by curbside recycling and had them shipped to companies that could do that for me 
because in my mind it's just something that is okay to spend money on to me it's an investment that i want to make because the environment is so important to me so if they do in fact do that i'll leave that below in the description and i haven't gathered enough razor parts <laughs> at this point to do it myself and see how it goes, but I intend to do that in the future and just see if it is worth it monetarily. I can't imagine it would cost that much if it's just razor heads, but we'll see. Another wasteful thing I still use is aluminum foil, and to be honest, the only reason that I use it is to wrap chicken in when I'm baking it. I have not managed to figure out a way to bake chicken without it getting super dry, and the best way that I've found to bake it is in aluminum foil. Now, aluminum foil itself, I believe, can be recycled at most places. I think it also depends on your area for any recycling, but it has to be clean. So it can be very difficult to clean chicken and stuff off of it, which I try to do as best as I can. I haven't yet found a, like, reusable something that I can wrap chicken in to seal the heat in and the steam while it's cooking. So if anyone out there happens to have a special trick that is less wasteful than using aluminum foil to bake chicken, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Another wasteful thing I still use that is very relevant to the origin of this channel, look we're doing a tie-in, um, that is books. Books, freaking books. I really love books and this is to me, this is like a small collection, if you can see the bookshelf back there. And not all of those are mine, but I would love to see which is considered less wasteful. An e-reader, like a Kindle, considering all the different parts and components that go into it. I don't know if Kindles are recyclable in any way. I'd love to know that. Maybe that's something I'll look up. And I know a lot of books can be recycled, I would think, as long as you probably take, you know, the covers off of them. I mean, books are just paper. They're trees. And part of me does feel bad every time I buy a book that a tree had to be destroyed for that paper to be made. However, I love books. I'm a writer. I'm a reader. It. I prefer having books to Kindles anytime. I have a Kindle, but I use it so infrequently that I don't even know what books are on it. I, I find it much easier and much more pleasant to read from a book than a Kindle because I just don't like being any more reliant on electronics than I already am. So there's a lot of different factors that go into it, but yeah, I still buy books. The more sustainable thing to do would be to buy secondhand, of course, because once that item already exists, that book, there's no more paper being cut, paper being cut down? That's not how that works. There's no more trees being cut down to make that one item because it already exists. And also using the library would be better than buying new, as is the case with pretty much any item. Buying used, something that already exists, the resources have already been made, is better than buying new so that new resources have to be used. But, uh... Yeah, sometimes I still buy books new. I'm trying to get out of that habit a little bit more. The next wasteful item I still buy is tissues. Facial tissues, like blow your nose kind of tissues. Now, the more eco-friendly thing to do would be to carry around a handkerchief, but I'm not fucking doing that. I think I did do that once when I was younger because my grandparents, especially my grandma, if I can remember right, she would always have a handkerchief in her pocket and she would take it out wherever we happen to be, and blow her nose, and just shove it right back in her pocket. And I know a lot of people do that. I think that's more of an old-fashioned kind of thing to carry a hanky with you. I don't know. But to me, it's just... It's just kind of gross. I'm sorry. If you do that, that's fine. I mean, good on you for not using a single-use tissue every single time you blow your nose. But I can't bring myself to do it. I... It, no, it's it's too fucking gross. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and the last wasteful thing I still buy is new clothes sometimes. Now, as I was saying before with the books, the more eco-friendly thing to do is to go thrift shopping, yard selling, whatever you want to call it, thread up, buy online, anything. Basically, buying used clothes is better because no new resources are being made. So obviously new clothes are going to be made no matter what, but the more that you buy any item, the demand for it goes up, so production for it also has to go up. A lot of products already exist that are perfectly fine to be reused. It's just, you know, a lot of people have kind of like eh, icky feelings about thrifting or, or used clothes or anything like that. Personally, I don't have a problem with used clothes. My problem lies more in the fact that I don't like going to stores that often. And also, sometimes I tend to have kind of weird sizing, especially my pants. It can often be very difficult to find pants that fit me because I have a big old booty, but I'm very short. <laughs> so I always have to find petite clothing or short pants specifically. 
Otherwise, they just don't fit me. And a lot of times, thrift stores tend to, and yard sales for that matter, a lot of these places tend to not have sizes that are not in like the average range. So people who are very petite like I am, people who are XXL, big and tall, that kind of thing, we tend to not have as many options when it comes to thrifted clothing. Another part of that is the only new clothes I buy nowadays, I mean, I fucking hate clothes shopping in general, but when I do buy clothing, it's usually to support a specific brand or a certain creator or in some way to support some sort of cause. That's the word I'm trying to think of, cause, holy shit. So for instance, this hoodie that I'm wearing right now is from Grounds and Hounds. They are a coffee, predominantly a coffee company, but they sell a lot of other stuff as well. And proceeds from purchases go towards animal rescue groups and like animal shelters and stuff like that. So I have no problem buying new from them because I love what they stand for and I want to help them out. I think a lot of the other things that I have that are new lately that weren't gifted um, did come from some sort of fundraising thing or I just really want to support a specific brand or company or person that I really believe in and I like their cause. And I do have some items that are built for a specific reason. And this, this sounds really odd probably, but there are certain brands, I'm sorry, that are a little bit better quality than others. I don't really buy fast fashion because it's known for being controversial, not great quality, all that kind of stuff. But for instance, I bought a buttload of new socks <laughs> when winter came because the company that makes these particular socks, uh, Duluth, I don't know their ethics or anything off the top of my head, but their socks feel great and they actually stay on when you take your boots off. So that was something that I felt like was worth investing in. Yeah, I would like to try going into thrift stores a little bit more often because that would get me out and about amongst the people, as terrifying as that can be sometimes. And it also, if I felt like I needed to replace certain pieces of my wardrobe, which I do not at this time, I would like to get rid of some things. I think that would be a more eco-conscious way to do it than buying something new from some random company. Okay, that is the list thus far. So yeah, I just really wanted to make this to kind of point out that, I mean, I'm by no means zero waste. Average people are not the target audience for zero waste. However, even people who are trying very hard to be very mindful and sustainable and minimalist or whatever you want to call it, even we have certain things that are not eco-conscious, are not zero waste, are not minimal. And I just kind of wanted to point out some of the wasteful things that I still use and why I use them. Some of you may totally agree, like, oh yeah, I, I understand why you would still buy this or that or some other thing. And I also buy those. Others of you might be thinking, you know, suck it up. You can use a handkerchief. I don't want to. <laughs> so yeah, if you thought this video was interesting, if there was any thoughts that you had on it or if there's any wasteful things that you still use and maybe you feel a little bit guilty about it, don't as long as you're trying to improve your footprint overall. I think it's perfectly acceptable to not be perfect at this sort of thing. Comment below what you thought and like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. If you'd like to keep up with me on other social media, I'll leave my accounts below in the description as well as links to my published novels, Blood of Fire and Trail of Flames. So until next time, see ya. Oh my God, I'm tired. <laughs>